preach as a pastor. I preach often Sunday morning and then again back up Sunday then night. Then of course we do this and then I also write a, a pastoral a letter to my church each week which is more or less a, a, a pastoral sermon. And then often I'm writing a, a, what's called an apologetics article as well for a, another website. And added to that, often invited to speak at other places through the week. Um, it could be a school, a, a convention or something that's happening. So added to that, I'm also supervising about 25 degree students. And this is part of my regular weekly routine. Not an extraordinary week, this is my week. This is, this is what it looks like. Added to that also are the responsibilities that I have here toward YFM, uh, being chairman of the board and things like that, where I, where I have to, you know, Keep my hand on YFM, and that's a and you're a lot of work, Cameron. So yeah, I'm, a, I'm some huge work, mate. Absolutely. Uh, high maintenance staff member. <laughs> so there are some things the leader just cannot delegate, and one of those things is their own development. You can't delegate those things that make you a stronger, better, more effective person. One of the key ingredients to doing that is developing self-discipline. So there Someone are five is... key areas where every leader has to develop their self-discipline. So every Wednesday morning, I come to YFM, which overlooks the city of Launceston, and I do a one-hour program live, and it's usually on some life skill. It takes a little bit of preparation to do, and now we're about to go live to it. It's the thing that separates good leaders from great leaders. They have a greater chance of being able to lead an organization, lead a business, lead a project with not only confidence, but in, in an, as I said, in an inspiring way. The first one is establishing regularity and routines. By being consistent, you become a reliable leader. That's regular daily habits, regular daily things. It means organizing your day around time frames that are regular, day in, so day out. So by establishing, out. even in your home life, regular meal times, regular bedtimes, certain routines that become a part of the, the family ritual. The other aspect that the leader cannot avoid and must develop as an aspect of self-discipline is regular daily reading. Become a reader. Become a reader. Cameron, in our state of Tasmania, most of our people, not just my opinion, this is what the research says, most Tasmanians do not know how to read past something like grade five level primary school. They don't know how to read. That means most, and, and we're talking over 50%, I believe it's up, upwards of 60% of Tasmanians have a reading level that's, that's not past something like grade five, grade six. And that puts them at a huge disadvantage. Reading is, is strangely something that we are not taught beyond primary school. And even by the time you get to grade five or six, the the art and science of reading is no longer implemented. To read a book requires a great deal of self-discipline. And if you don't think so, ask yourself this question, and it won't take you very long to answer. Have, have you started reading a book and not finished it? Have you, just start, have you got a few books that you've started and you haven't finished? Mm. I have plenty of time. Yeah, well, actually, you're, yes. you're smiling, Cameron. So, <laughs> because those things become the indicator of of this ability to develop your self discipline muscle. I I heard someone say that the mind has a, a section to it where it stores things for immediate retrieval. Uh, it's colloquially called the memory muscle. The memory muscle, and for most people, they don't they don't even realise that they have a memory muscle. Leaders are readers. It's more than a cliche. It's something that will cause the leader to be fueled, resourced, and energised. Good reading. I've heard some people say something like this: "You, you can't learn anything out of a book," and I can only wonder 
whether they're reading the right books. Because if you know which books to read and you know how to read, even more importantly, you will benefit tremendously in a way that you can rarely benefit even from sitting down with someone. There is an exchange in the leader's soul that takes place. And one of the ways you begin to rebuild your memory muscle is by reading. It, so it, it sounds like a disconnect, but it isn't. The leader has to be financially competent, both personally and as a steward of those finances that they are responsible for. If you're going to lead an organization that involves finance, you must be someone who is competent with your own finances. If you are in personal debt, you must develop a plan, a strategy to get out of that debt. And at the same time, you must develop a savings plan. The self-discipline of saving. And I say that in the context where perhaps our older listeners are going to hear me say that and they're going to go, oh, I was about to write something quite profound down, but that's not profound, that's common sense. And I'm going to tell you it's not that common anymore. It's just <laughs> not common. And the reason I know it's not common is because of the spiralling personal debt, shall we call it crisis, that we see right now. I think there are two really, really big issues that are debilitating more and more people in this day and age. One is personal debt and the other one is alcohol. I think we are kidding ourselves with both of these issues. But with debt, it will, it will absolutely crush people. You take those lessons with you into the organization as well. So the self-discipline of savings and also the self-discipline of regular exercise and diet. Leaders will say no to certain foods at certain functions. Leaders will also say no when they're not at a function, when they're not being offered food, but that food is sitting in the pantry or sitting in the fridge. Leaders will learn to say no. You have no one standing over your shoulder. There's no one making you do this. You know, it's like when you see the biggest loser. There's, a, there's about there's camera crews, there's sound recorders, there's these personal trainers all around these people who are telling them, no, you, you can't eat that. It's, you know, it's full of fat and it's full of carbs. You need to, you know, tone down on the fat and the carbs and you need to back off the wheat and you need to, you know, this, that or the other. Well, you're not going to have that. You need self-discipline to be able to say every day I'm going to go for a walk either to start my day end my day middle of the day whatever it is get a regular plan of exercise we all need to exercise even as we've been doing this program this morning Cameron yeah. you and I we while have. we go to music we've been exercising it's, simple. Exactly. it's a very simple exercise we just stand up just and get it, out of the chair if you're not physically fit I've, I've noticed this over the last three or four years you're not going to be mentally fit either you're mm. going to have problems with focus and, and well not, not going dizzy or anything like that but yeah. the concentration and levels will finally, suffer finally the leader's spiritual life requires self-discipline daily Bible reading. If you are not reading your Bible daily, you should. You should open to the book of Proverbs and at least read a chapter of Proverbs every day corresponding to the day of the month. If you are not regularly visiting the gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, you should be. Refresh your mind, refresh your soul about the words of our Lord. If you're not regularly reading the epistle to the Ephesians, which talks about the church, you should be. For a Christian, it looks like a daily time of, I'm going to call it methodical prayer, or yes. I might call it intentional prayer, yes. where where you are going through something that helps you to pray. Some Christians use the, the acronym ACTS. Adoration, Confession, Thanks, and Supplication. Some Christians use the Lord's Prayer, where it starts off with worship. It starts off, again, re requesting uh, needs to be met. Then there's confession. Then there's prayer for others. And then it finishes with worship. Thine is the glory, and so on. So they use that as a pattern. And in between there, there are people, family members, um, church community members that they're praying for. Whatever it is, you need the self-discipline to do that every day. 
also Bible reading. Cameron, you would be stunned. I'm sure you would be stunned to discover that there are some Christians who do not read their Bible every day. Yeah, yeah. So this is a basic spiritual self-discipline. One final word about self-discipline. The thing about self-discipline is you don't want to do it. You're, there is a natural <laughs> resistance to be self-disciplined. This is what makes it a discipline. If it's something that you only enjoy and it's always within your comfort limits, then chances are you're not growing, you're not being stretched. So understand this, there'll be times when you make a commitment to do that walk, that exercise, that reading, whatever it is, and every fiber of your body will just want to stay in bed. And this is where the leader steps up. So self-discipline, there's a price to pay, and these are the five areas where every leader has to learn to develop.